Hi YouTube. So recently I put a status update on Facebook asking my friends and family basically if they could pick a topic no matter what it is, something important to them, something that they feel like they could change in today's society, no matter what it is, what would you talk about? And the one of the comments that one of my friends put up really stood out to me, and that was mental health. Now, reason being is because I personally feel in today's society, everybody, majority of everybody, seems to try to fit in with what the social media standards are. Basically, if you don't match up to the standards that are seen every day on social media, you're basically not worth it. And a lot of the bullying, you know, recent suicides, everything that falls under those categories, not only with bullying and suicide, you know, there's eating disorders, anxiety, behavioral disorders, uh, you know, stress-related disorders, if someone has gone through a trauma, you know, um, OCD, many multiple factors that are out there lead to mental health issues and I feel like people nowadays are not empathetic towards others. It's basically my way or the highway thinking, which I do not think is okay. You shouldn't slander somebody just because they view something differently from you, just because they like something differently from you, or they like dressing a certain way, or they like doing their hair a certain way, or, you know, they don't wear the most popular brands. It's all of those things combined into one add up to these mental health issues. And I truly feel like it's starting at such a young age in today's society that leads up to a multiple events that's just negative and sad and heartbreaking to these kids who can't seem to get that emotional stability because someone next to them is thinking, not only thinking, but saying that they're not good enough. You don't match up to my standards. You're not cool. Of course, much more just hurtful things that are being said to these young children, both male and female, and it's not okay. Mental health includes emotional, it includes psychological and social well-being. It not only affects how we think, but how we feel. It is so much easier said than done to say, turn the other cheek, when in reality everybody is human, everybody has their own different feelings. You can say something to someone and the way they, the way their personality is, it's going to go in one ear and out the other and they simply will not care. 
versus somebody else who their personality is just so emotional. They have so much more feelings, you could say, that it's seriously going to tear them apart just by what somebody has said. It doesn't have to be physically. The social media that has taken over this generation, actually all ages, people are very quick to type how they feel about something rather than saying it. Like I said, everybody is different. So what you might think as, oh, this person simply put a comment, who cares? Somebody else isn't going to look at that comment the same. They're going to really take it to the heart. And that's what is the root of all of these problems. It varies based on how we handle stress, how we are with others, how we relate to others. I feel that mental health starts even at childhood, even through your teens going into adulthood. It starts that foundation. And if you yourself are a strong person and you feel like you're able to make a difference, then go help the next person who isn't emotionally strong as you, who doesn't have that voice to speak up and say something that they feel. If you wish to make a change or if you wish to see a change in other people, you need to start with that change. Now, much more than the social life affects mental health. It, you know, there's family history, genes, life experiences, trauma, abuse, brain chemistry, they are very common, but it doesn't exclude you from seeking help, from getting help. I feel like around you, your family members, your friends, just a simple reaching out to that person and making sure, are you okay? That goes a very long way. Now, early, some early warning signs, if you're not sure if someone you know, someone you're living with has mental health problems, um, you know, having low or very little energy, feeling helpless, feeling hopeless, smoking, drinking, using drugs at a very unusual rate, feeling numb, feeling as if nothing matters, feeling as if there's no solution to anything that's going on in their life, pulling away from the people that care about them, the usual activities that they are involved in, whether it be work, whether it be school, extracurricular activities, they start to pull away from those things. As far as family and close friends, you start to be violent with them, 
you start to be ugly with them. Reason being is because you know that they love you. You know that you can. You know that they're going to be there for you. So you feel the need to walk all over them and be rude to them and be ugly to them because they're not going anywhere. Severe mood swings as far as in romantic relationships or friendships, even relationships with your family and friends. So many warning signs are there that the average person just ignores. And it's something so small with helping another person to prevent a person being hospitalized, even suicide. A couple of months ago, I started watching the Netflix series, 13 Reasons Why. I personally feel that everybody should watch this show, especially parents with young children, even parents with teenagers, you know, even college kids, even if you're out of college, I feel you should just watch this show. Everything that they showed in this particular show is real. There are some people out there that you might not even realize that you're being a bully towards someone until something happens and you can sit back and think, was that really me? Did I contribute to this? What could I have done to prevent this? I don't want to go into the show, for those of you who haven't seen it, I highly recommend it, but watching each episode, each experience that the main character went through, the small details that I feel a lot of educators overlook in the school system, they simply overlook them because they're more worried about things that simply don't matter instead of looking at the bigger picture. Like I said, I don't want to go into details of the show for those who, of you who haven't seen it, but I think teachers need to focus more on the kids who are not popular. Even the kids who are popular, you never know what someone is going through. You never know what they are feeling, what they are hiding behind their smile. Whenever somebody is angry or upset, you always should be empathetic towards them because you never know what they're going through. I learned that at a job training a few years ago. We were sitting in the training and he simply said, so-and-so at work comes in, but yet at home they're struggling through this, this, and this, and yet you think they're always grumpy because they hate their job, when in reality they're struggling to keep their job because of problems that are going on at home. There's so many factors that fall into this particular subject. 
I feel like there's not enough people trying to help and contribute to reduce these problems that are happening. I could put up a status on Facebook such as the update, status update that I talked about in the beginning. Yes, I got some feedback, but if I were to put up a status on the Dallas Cowboys when they lost to the Packers, everyone would have been commenting that the Packers are better than the Cowboys or vice versa, and which one of their favorite players is more important, which one of their sports teams is more important, but yet something like this that actually makes a true difference in lives, there wasn't that many feedback. That is the true issue. Everything combined into what mental health is means something. People who have anxiety, it's an issue. People who have eating disorders, that is a mental health issue. People who joke when they say that they have OCD shouldn't joke about something like that. Suicidal behavior, psychotic disorders, personality disorders. Also, this particular friend of mine that mentioned this topic, mental health, it also stood out to me because recently there is a radio station, 99.9, and the host is Delilah. She talks to everybody daily that calls into the radio station, telling them they are loved. God loves them. They are better than the troubles that they're going through. They will get through the struggle. And yet recently her son just committed suicide after battling depression. My mom is the one that told me about her son committing suicide. I read the article, a couple of them. On one of the comment pages on Facebook, they were saying how could such an influential person as herself have a son that battles with depression. I saw other comments saying that how could she be rich and make all this money and her son battles with depression. So many irrelevant factors were being said when mental Health issues don't affect certain people based on what their income is, what they look like, how tall they are, what their hair color is, doesn't pick and choose. Any and everybody could have a mental health issue. There's so many 
cases that you read about of people taking their lives for one reason or another. I can't help but think what led them to that. It almost leaves me speechless with absolutely nothing to say, not because I don't have anything to say, but because it blows my mind. People don't seem to want to help anybody nowadays if it does not benefit them. You shouldn't feel that way. You, you should want to help people. Because at the end of the day, that is rewarding. It's self-rewarding. To be the cause of someone's smile. That simple, how are you? lets those people know that someone cares. Positive mental health allows you to realize your full potential. It allows you to cope with these stresses that life throws at you. It is okay to talk about mental health for people with actual mental health problems, for young people that are out there looking to help to be the voice that other people do not have, for parents, for caregivers, for all the educators out there that are striving to teach these young children to have a mind of their own, to stand alone if they have to, because at the end of the day, that's what matters more. Standing alone and standing up for what you believe in, rather than standing in a crowd of people that don't know what they believe in. They're just simply looking to the side and following that person, but that's not what they believe in just because the person next to them walked forward two steps, they're gonna walk forward two steps. Educators need to get back to this particular focus. Now, I'm not saying all educators, but the ones that need to get back to this should. Faith and community leaders, I don't see enough of people wanting to help. Conversations in the community, um, talk about it with your friends and your family members. You might not realize that a person that is very dear to you has a mental health issue because you've never talked about it. It's not something that if I struggled with a health issue, it wouldn't be easy for me to talk about. I don't think it's easy for anybody to talk about. People have to approach something like this, just like with traumas and hardships in life, with a very soft approach. This is not something that needs to be tackled head on. Empathy is huge in this area. You have to be able to feel for that other person and try to understand how their views are, 
how they feel, how they see each day. And try to put yourself in that person's shoes. And just try to understand what is making them feel that way. Instead of judging them. Instead of telling them, well, if I were you, I would do this. It's not about you. It's about helping them. Once you can look at a person based off of what they're telling you. And once you understand, instead of making it about you, that's where the help starts. That's where the healing starts, to come together to truly unify and cope with the pressures that they feel all day, every day on a daily basis. All of these issues are very common. And I think it needs to be focused on a lot more. When you have positive mental health, you work much more productivity. You help in each and every way that you can, not only with your family, your friends, your job, your community. Ways to maintain positive mental health. Getting professional help, if need be, if the average speaking with somebody on a daily basis about what you're feeling, it might be extensive, you might need to seek professional help. It helps you connect with others, hear somebody else's story to understand their story you stay positive that whole manifestation of being positive truly helps in your daily life also it spreads to other people and they will truly feel it when it comes from the heart when you start to believe in yourself believe that there's much more out there than a simple Facebook comment, or a tweet, or an Instagram photo. Helping others. To me, when I help somebody else, that puts a smile on my face. Seeing them smile, hearing them say thank you so much, is such a rewarding feeling. Not only with my job, but my everyday life, that's just who I've always been and who I will continue to be. This topic of mental health really spoke to me in numerous of ways. And I want to continue to talk about everything that actually matters in today's society rather than the garbage that people throw out on social media the things that people think are a priority when they're really not talk about your problems with somebody ask for help Be the change you want to see in the world. Smile. 
and try to help save a life.